Good day to you. When you play a game with friends, doesn't matter what kind of game it is, could be a card game, could be a board game, could be a sport game, ping pong, golf, volleyball, whatever. When you play a, a game with friends, what kind of a player are you? Are you a player that, you know, on the outside you appear all fun and everything, but when it comes down to it, you've got to win and you're going to do everything you can to win. I'm not going to say that you're a cheater and that you'll cheat, but you will. if you're a ping pong player, you'll do a sneaky serve, for example. you got to win. Or you're a person that, you know, sort of gets to the end, you sort of give up. Maybe you don't even need to finish. If you, if you do miniature golf, maybe you'll play 16 and then skip a couple holes. It's not that important. It's more about the fun. Are you a person who expects to lose? These are all ways of approaching game playing from a point of view of philosophy. A philosophy of how you should approach the game, how you should carry out the game, how you should conduct yourself. What are the fair rules and what are the unfair rules? How should a player be penalized? How should a player be rewarded? It's that that is my entry point for today's class because we are now talking about philosophies of media systems. We're taking on a more narrow focus now. We've started very, very, very broadly with global. If you can kind of think of an inverted pyramid here, we've started with with globalization, we've narrowed it a little bit to cultural characteristics. Now out of cultural characteristics are growing philosophies. So we're going to take on philosophies of media systems because we want to understand how media systems grow up in countries so differently or in cultures so differently or amongst different audiences so differently if you define a medium by its audience like the Rolling Stones are doing a tour again this summer there's a whole medium there of people that are speaking through social media platforms etc located all over the world they're constituting a specific body for a specific media form so how do media forms in general grow up mostly they grow up as per definition in this class by what by, by what country they're in but also culture and then fan bases I mentioned as well can play a role in philosophies for media systems because they don't just grow up automatically without any supervision right media systems have a profound impact on a country's on a country's economic system on its on its uh, entertainment on the way that people elevate their interests and educate themselves, on governing. Media has a, a big impact on governing. So media are not just allowed to grow up like a weed in a field. Media have various entities that are trying to, there are various entities that are trying to impact media to influence it to make sure it's towards their interests or other interests, including societal interests. So we're taking on philosophies and our entry point scholarship wise comes from a book that was written just after World War II. It was called uh, Four Theories of the Press. Four Theories of the Press. It was written by three authors, Siebert, Peterson, and Schramm. And the climate at just after World War II had a, the entire world really wondering, what the hell just happened? We just went through eight years of the most sickening destruction that we could go. What happened? Was there a role of media? Of course there was a role of media in World War II. Of course there was a role. In media, the Nazi party used media very, very effectively, as did the Americans. You can't say the Nazis did without looking at the Americans. Media played a central role. And so let's examine what went wrong, so to speak, uh, so that we don't have on World War III. It's a, <laughs> a problem that we're still contending with today. And so we're going to take on six, six philosophies that have grown up in countries that have framed the media systems. Now, this is not to say in a too simplistic form that each philosophy fits one particular country or that one or that a country, a given country, has one particular philosophy. In actual fact, you have a blending of them, right? But there is a general thrust of one main philosophy in most countries. And furthermore, four of these philosophies are what we call legacy philosophies. They, they are they have a substantial body of research that has been, been written about them, that has developed them, that has provided a theoretical foundation from which quantitative and qualitative and all kinds of other ways of approaching re the research questions within those philosophies have been developed. So, so four of those are legacy philosophies. And then we have two newer, still emerging ph philosophies. They are in their nascent state, if you know that word, the beginning state. They're, they're still being developed. So let's take them on. We're going to go to the first one, and it is authoritarianism. And authoritarianism is easy to dismiss this one. I mean, the word authoritarian, we can't stand. We may think for example, of our parents when we were 16 years old, you know, staying out later than we were supposed to, maybe leaving a beer bottle in the garage, and something that we were not supposed to do according to our parents' rules. And, and what's the consequence? Yeah, curfew for some of us, or 
privileges suspended, like the ability to use the parent's car. And, you know, there's a lot of a lot of anger on the part of most kids at that, thinking parents are authoritarian. But the basic thinking behind that is that parents know better than the kids at the age of eight, at the age of 16, and that the parents' wisdom is, is really what's going to give them the authority, plus the fact that they own the house, they provide for the family, food, shelter, clothing, so they get to take things away from the kids. And that's kind of the thinking behind authoritarianism. It grows up in the 1500s, although you can trace it all the way back to Plato, but it grows up with Machiavelli, and then and then later um, Hitler used much of and and Mussolini used much of the theories of, of philosophy as well. It's basically saying the authoritarian philosophy that that the head of the state is an all-knowing ruler, is an all-knowing wise ruler who needs obedience and needs obedience. Otherwise, the state. When we use the word state here, we're talking about a modern day country, but state is really an apparatus that combines government and society together. That the state is has the head of the state is an all knowing ruler and deserves the obedience of the people because the, the ruler knows better than the people. The ruler is better educated. And in many, but not all cases, the ruler also has a divine connection to a deity. They could be a priest, for example, they could be a, a, an ayatollah. The head of state with a religious connection has that is that you have to go through the head of state to get to the all the all knowing all knowing deity because the all knowing ruler has the knowledge of that access, and so there's a lot of faith placed in the decisions made at the very top of the state, and you follow right along. Now, interestingly, interestingly enough, media in an authoritarian state are privately owned. They are actually privately owned. Now, I'm not saying that they're profit-making, though. They can be, but what I am saying is that they are not government-owned in an authoritarian state. There is that separation there. However, the media are meant only to serve the state. If the media agitate against the state, even over simple ideas like um, criticizing a state ruler, then you are automatically out of bounds in a in a in an authoritarian state. You are not permitted to do that. So that kind of thing is not allowed. And furthermore, it's punished very severely. It's punished with death in some cases, or fines, or being quote disappeared, where the person who is a reporter who is criticizing the state is made to go away. Uh, punishments are very, very, very fierce in an authoritarian philosophy. And I see my phone is running out of time, so I have to stop this and continue with a second video.